In shocking news in the world, Amber Geiger, the former Dallas police officer, was found guilty of murder yesterday. Her sentencing uh, portion of the trial is continuing today. It wrapped up yesterday with uh, no decision, and, and like I said, it will continue today. Uh, on it. She is facing up to 99 years in prison, but she won't get anywhere near that. Now, according to the Department of Justice, the average is right around um, 15 years in prison for first degree murder. Now, I hate to break the bad news to the world out there and to the Anti-Defamation -de um, League. She won't get 15 years, and even if she's sentenced to 15 years, she'll probably be out in six and a half. That is the, the overall statistics, according to the Department of Justice, on white versus black American crimes of violence. And it's reversed if it is black against a white um, person. If it was a black officer against a white person who would have done this, they would, the officer would have gotten uh, closer to the 15 years he would have to have served before he would be eligible. Yeah, systemic racism is very much alive when it comes to the justice system here in America. Now, let me back up just a little bit on the Amber Geiger case, in case you're not aware of the circumstances in this case. Amber Geiger, the Dallas police officer, had worked um, more than her average shifts um, leading up to the seven days prior to the events that took place in this day. The actual day the shooting took place, she had worked an extra long shift th that day, came home, and instead of going to her apartment, she walked one extra floor up the uh, apartment stairs to an apartment that she thought was hers. Now, I want you to close your eyes for a minute here. I want you to do this little exercise with me. She had walked an extra flight of stairs up to the, you know, and so she's on a, on a concrete landing outside of the apartment. Outside of Amber's apartment, there is no floor mat that is outside of her apartment. But outside of Bottom's apartment, there is a floor mat that says, Welcome. Your eyes are closed now. The first thing that you see is the floor mat. You reach for the door, and it's unlocked. Now you know that you locked the door when you went to work. You enter into the apartment. The first thing you see is a chair. A chair that does not belong to you. You've never owned a chair like this chair. You then notice there is a couch on the far wall that doesn't match the furniture that you have. It's not the same color, it's not the same make, it's not the same style, and none of your pictures are on the wall above that couch like you have in your apartment. You then look to your right towards the kitchen. You notice that the refrigerator, the clipping magazine clippings and coupons that are on the refrigerator and freezer door do not match yours. You have nothing on your refrigerator. Eyes still closed. Now you look to your left. And to your left you see another couch that is along the near wall closest to the door you see an African-American man sitting there watching TV and eating a bowl of ice cream. What is your first response? 
I know you're tired. You've worked a long day at work, a very stressful job. There is an African-American man sitting on the couch, watching television, eating a bowl of ice cream. It doesn't matter what flavor it is, but it just happens to be chocolate and vanilla. What is your first reaction? Is it, what the hell are you doing in my apartment? Is it, this isn't my apartment? Or is it, pull out your handgun and fire twice at the individual, striking him once directly in the heart? Now, he has no weapon. He's not making any moves towards you. He's just as shocked to see you standing in his apartment as you are of him sitting on the couch eating that bowl of ice cream in such a menacing way. You've just shot an African-American man in his own apartment eating a bowl of ice cream watching television. What's your next reaction? Is it to call 911? Should it be to check on the individual you just shot to remove the menacing bowl of ice cream from him so he can't hurt you with that bowl of ice cream? And what made you fire at that individual in the first place? Was it your view of that African American and the color of his skin? Was it because you've exchanged words with this individual on a previous date? Or is it that you just overreacted to the situation? Well, Amber Geiger's uh, first uh, response was to go over to the individual that she just shot and then said, what the hell? Her defense is she thought he was a burglar who had broken into her apartment and was eating her ice cream, I guess. She never got to that point. She, def she described that he was eating ice cream. They know he was eating ice cream. The bowl was found there. The spoon was found there. He was shot, and they know, forensically, he was on the couch, sitting on the couch, watching television. No weapon other than that spoon. Her self-defense claim was denied. No one on the jury really believed that she thought that this individual was a harm or a risk to her or that she should have known that she, you know, that he was in his own apartment. She shot and killed an unarmed black man sitting on his couch eating ice cream. Now, I'm going to read you a little bit of the article from that was released courtesy of CNN. Former Dallas police officer who killed an unarmed black man in his apartment has been found guilty of murder Tuesday. A rare conviction in a high profile police shooting and a verdict that civil rights activists heralded as a victory for police accountability. Amber Geiger said she thought she was entering her own unit, one four below, when she encountered 26-year-old Botham Jean last year and mistook him as a burglar. Geiger, an off-duty police officer who had just finished a long shift, fired two shots at Jean, who had been watching television and eating ice cream. After dramatic 
seven-day trial, the jury rejected Geiger's self-defense claim and delivered the Jean's family attorney called a historic decision. This is a huge victory, not only for the family of Botham Jean, but as his mother told me in a, a moment ago, this is a victory for black people in America. Civil rights lawyer Lee Merritt said after the verdict was returned, it's a signal that the tide is going to change here. Police are going to be held accountable for their actions. And we believe that we'll change policing culture all over the world. Before you go and villainize all police, please keep in mind, not all police are racist. There's a very few select individuals out there, bad apples in every occupation around. Amber Geiger, race played a role in this. It most certainly did, and race will most certainly play a role when it comes to her sentencing. Will they try to make an example out of her? Most likely not. And even if they do, she's going to get off fairly easy compared to what would happen if the roles were reversed. If an African-American officer shot and killed a white woman eating ice cream on her couch. Because the first thing that people would say is, what could she have possibly have done while she was eating that ice cream? How menacing could she have been while eating that ice cream? Bottom, Jean... How menacing could he have been while he was eating that ice cream? What could he have possibly have done that was threatening to her while he sat on a couch and she was more than seven feet away? Thanks for joining me today. You stay safe out there.